In this video, we're going to look at the matrix vector equation AX is equal to B. So that sum matrix times a vector is equal to another vector. So what is a matrix times a vector? Well, here we have A, our matrix, times a vector X. So A will have columns of vectors, A1, A2, A3, all the way up to AN. And we're going to multiply that by the vector, which has entries x1, x2, all the way down to xn. And in the end, we're going to get x1, a1, plus x2, a2, plus all the way down to xn, an. This is called the dot product of a matrix and a vector, and we will discuss these a little bit more later. But the main idea here is that the number of columns in the matrix must be the same as the number of columns, uh, sorry, as the number of rows in the vector. So if we have a1 through an, we must have x1 through xn. Otherwise, we get this weird thing where, let's say we had xn plus 1 at the bottom here, well, we'd be saying plus, we don't have anything to do. We don't have a 0 there, so we can't multiply by 0, but we have this thing we need to multiply by xn plus 1, and we simply cannot do that. So the number of columns in the matrix must equal the number of rows in the vector for this to work. So let's do an example here. I have the matrix A times the vector x, and if we remember, ax is equal to a1 x1 plus a2, x2, all the way up to a n, x n. So let's see what we have here. Let's label these nicely. So this first column we'll call a1, second column we'll call a2, third column we'll call a3, and we'll label these elements in the vector x. So we'll call this one x1, x2, and x3. So this should be a little bit easier to see what we're doing here. So in this case we're going to have x1, a1, plus x2, a2, plus x3, a3. So now we can substitute some values in. We see x1 is 4, and a1 is 1, 2, that's the vector 1, 2. x2 is equal to 2 times the vector a2, which is just 3, 1. And x3 is negative 1, and the vector a3 is 4, 6. So Using simple vector multiplication and addition here, we're going to see this is 4, 8 plus 6, 2 minus 4, 6. And this comes out to be 4 plus 6 minus 4 is 6, and 8 plus 2 minus 6 is 4. So this end result is the vector 6, 4. So that's a little bit interesting here that our result is a 2 by 1. So why do you think this is? Well, our a here is 2 by 3, and our vector is 3 by 1. So the reason this works is because this 3 and this 3 are equal, so we can multiply, because remember we must have n columns in the matrix and n rows in the vector. The resulting matrix or the resulting vector will always be the size of the two outside numbers here. So we have a 2 in the matrix and a 1 in the vector, so the end result will be 2 by 1. And this holds for matrix multiplication, and we'll get to that later, but I thought I'd bring it up now just so you can verify if you are doing this properly. Here's another way of doing things. We can reverse engineer our matrix vector products. Sometimes we want to go backwards. So I have 3v1 plus 2v2 minus 6v3 plus 0v4, and I want to represent this as a matrix and a vector. Well, this is just basically x1, a1 plus x2, a2 plus x3, a3 plus x4, a4. And 
this is the same thing as a times a vector x. So I think we know how to put this into a proper notation. So our matrix A, what is that going to look like? Well, that's where we put our a1, a2, a3, and a4. But we weren't given specific vectors. We were just given v1, v2, v3, and v4. So let's put those in here. So this is v1, v2, v3, and v4. So that's a. Now what does x look like? Well, x has four entries, x1, x2, x3, and x4. And these are clearly our coefficients. So this will be 3, 2, negative 6, and 0. And if we do our dot product rule, then we get back 3v1 plus 2v2 minus 6v3 plus 0v4. So yes, this is in fact correct. So this is how you reverse engineer your matrix vector equation. So now we can see that Look, we have three things that are equivalent. The solution set of AX is equal to B is the same as the solution set to X1, A1 plus X2, A2 all the way up to Xn, An is equal to the vector B, which is equal to the solution set of the augmented matrix A1 through An with the augmented column B. So we can go between these ones at any time we want. We can take a matrix vector product and turn it into an augmented matrix. Uh, we can go through the number two step if we want, but these three things are equivalent and they all have the same solution sets. So what do we say? We say AX equals B has a solution if B is a linear combination of the columns of A. This was shown before when we solved X1A1 plus X2A2 all the way up to A, XNAN is equal to B. We did that already, so now we're saying, okay, because we can go that extra step, this is the same occurrence. So let's solve this example here. We have a times a vector x is equal to a vector b. We want to solve for what this vector x is. So what that means is we want to find the values of x1, x2, and x3. And we've been doing this already. So we're just saying, okay, is this a linear combination? Okay, well, let's put it into an augmented matrix and find out. So we have 1, 3, negative 4, negative 2, 1, 5, 2, 4, negative 3, negative 7, 6, and 12. So we can reduce this. Uh, what we can do is we can take the top row. We can leave that the same. So we have 1, 3, negative 4, negative 2. And the second row, we can subtract the first row from it. So 1 minus 1 is 0. 5 minus 3 is 2. 2 minus negative 4 is 6, 4 minus negative 2 is 6. And for the third row, we can add 3 of the first row. So negative 3 plus 3 is 0, negative 7 plus 9 is 2, 6 plus negative 12 is negative 6, and 12 plus negative 6 is 6. Okay, so what do we see here? Well, first of all, let's just do some reduction. Because why not? Let's multiply the first or the second and third row by negative one half or by a half. So two six six will become one three three. Two negative six six will become one negative three three. And we can reduce if we want. So sure, let's keep doing that just to get some practice with reducing our matrices. So we're going to take the third row and just add the second to it. So here we have negative two, zero, one, three, three. We're gonna add the second row, so we're gonna get zero, two, zero, six. And now we can pretty much solve our matrix here. So we have that 2x2 is equal to 6, which means that x2 is equal to 3. Okay, we have, from this, we have x2 plus 3x3 is equal to 3. So this means that 3x3 is going to equal to 0. So x3 is equal to 0. So that's good. And now we can use 
the first line to figure out the last bit. So that's going to say x1 plus so x1 plus 3x2 minus 4x3 is equal to negative 2. So this is saying x1 plus, well x2 is equal to 3, so x1 plus 9. x3 is equal to 0, so x1 plus 9 is equal to negative 2. So x1 is equal to negative 11. So with this we can find a solution and we can say that, okay, if we take, remember our solution, x1a1 plus x2a2 plus x3, a3 is equal to our vector b, we can say, okay, well, 3a1, or sorry, it should be negative 11a1, negative 11a1 plus 3a2 is equal to our vector b. And we can take a look at what the original vectors were. So we have 1, 1, negative 3 is a1, 3, 5, negative 7 is a2. Uh, we don't need to worry about a3. And this equals our vector b, negative 2, 4, 12. I could put those numbers in here, but this is a valid solution for x1, x2, and x3, because that's what we wanted to find. We wanted to find the vector x that tells us what it was. So that would be the vector negative 11, 3, 0. So that is the matrix vector equation. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'll answer them as quick as I can. If this video helped you, please share it because it may help your friends as well.